How's it going, everyone? How are you doing today? We are uh, going over uh, our preseason predictions for the Elite Battle League. I am joined by who is going to be my regular co-host, Mr. Landon, aka Inferno Man, our new celebrity in the community. <laughs> I just, I just caught up my merch. <laughs> I'm wearing my merch, so I was like showing up my logo. <laughs> Let's um, go. <laughs> one thing I want to mention, uh, it is very visible to see my monitor where like I'm recording myself here. So if you want to see uh, me two times, your wish is granted. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> double the front of double the fun. Uh, <laughs> so to quickly explain exactly what the show is, every week we will be doing a weekly roundup, sort of a sports center-esque Thing where we go over the three matches that happened during the week and our predictions for the next week and just basically going over everything that happened um, and just you know looking beyond as well to the next week that would follow um, these videos this one's coming out on Saturday however the normal videos will be coming out uh, at the latest or at the earliest Monday uh, more towards the afternoon I can't give you a set date because it depends on when we're able to record um, a set time rather but the, the late the earliest it'll be is Monday that way we have time to watch the three matches and kind of get an idea of what we want to talk about in the show but this is going to be a regular weekly thing um, hopefully we're both able to record all the time every time uh, for the five weeks and playoffs uh, if anything it'll be just me or just him uh, hopefully i don't think it'll ever come to that but we'll always find a day probably maybe <laughs> yeah I, I don't but move, i don't move to college uh, until like mid late august so i'll, I'll definitely be at home <laughs> there you go <laughs> so to get right into it we have uh we're gonna be going over all six teams uh i'm going over them in the order that you guys saw in the announcement video so first up is the Kentucky Kinglers, AKA always more videos. His team, he is the coach of the Kentucky Kinglers, like I should, I should say. Uh, his team is looking like uh, Mimikyu, Dracovish, Corviknight, Glare Nevin at 10, Toxtricity, Snorlax, Gengar, Heracross, and Lunala. And I won't lie, this is a team with like, uh, I, there's a reason why almost everyone in the league, but at this point with the interviews, by the way, the only one I haven't done is Crobats. Um, that's actually gonna get done very soon, uh, but Everyone else in the interview, aside from Derek, said brought up Derek at some point because this team, in my opinion, probably has the most potential, uh, especially with those first four mods. I mean, Mimikyu, Jacobish, Glare, and Durantan, Carbonite, they're very dangerous mods. Uh, so in my in my humble opinion, uh, I think this team has like a ton of potential just looking at it right away. Not really sure what Derek's going to do because Derek doesn't really know what he's going to do with this team. <laughs> um, but just looking at his team, I, I see just a ton of potential. What, what do you think? What do you think, London? I see we have a, a little bit of a, a David versus Goliath situation going on. Once again, like you said, uh, Derek doesn't know what he's doing with his team, but he does have a massive weapon here. Uh, if you just look at this team for a second, you can see quite a few uh vgc all-stars you got dracovish who has been the massive talk for gen 8 vgc uh glaring mm -hmm. dormanitan with the very interesting choice another stacked mon for gen 8 vgc uh you got mm -hmm. snorlax who has always been known to be super bulky um mm -hmm. i love seeing the heracross there i definitely think heracross is an underrated mon and uh mimikyu mm -hmm. is also one that i love to see on there so uh, Derek's got a very awesome team. I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings out. It's, I think personally, so for me, for the season for the Kentucky Kingers, I personally think, and this isn't a slide at Derek, but I think they might get off to a little bit of a slow start uh, as Derek kind of figures out his team, as he kind of starts to understand it a little bit more and understand battling a little bit more because that is the disadvantage he is at right now is that he doesn't fully understand vgc and everything right now uh i think best case scenario is he wins his first game um and he's able to get a feel of what it's like to utilize his team now the biggest thing for me is the fact that at some point every single one of these mods are going to be used if you guys didn't know that is one of the rules in the elite battle league every single pokemon on a team has to get used at some point or another uh so looking at this team i feel like at some point uh, gengar and lunala are not bad mons but it, it's gonna be interesting to see how he he's able to integrate them into the team because i feel like 
uh, the other seven are should be able to work together, especially the first four. And then Toxtricity is still a great mon. Snorlax is still a great mon. Heracross is still a great mon if used correctly. And then not to mention Snorlax, Toxtricity, Corviknights, uh, and Gengar can all Gigantamax. So it'll be interesting to see if he uses Gengar in that way. Do you think he'll, he'll end up, we'll end up seeing a, a G Max Gengar at some point? I'd absolutely love to see G Max Gengar. Um, but Although thing behind the scenes that you guys may or may not know is that uh, Derek was not informed of how serious this was beforehand and he didn't know how hard he was supposed to go with everything. So yeah. I don't know if Derek's exactly dedicated to getting all the G-Max soup he needs to Gigantamax yeah. all of his mons that can do so. So I think it's going to be a surprise whether or not we see uh, G Gigantamax Gengar. I think the one that he's going to want to go for uh, himself personally is Toxtricity. Um, mm, okay. just just because of the tight matchup. And I, I think Derek is a fan of Toxtricity. I know he's not a big fan of uh, newer gen mons, but there's always people that don't like newer gens and they love Toxtricity. I mean, the guy yeah. that's been dishing out on Sword and Shield since it came out has Toxtricity as his mascot, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other mod I would think is Corviknight uh, to G-Max, mm -hmm. to be honest, because it's already bulky enough. You bring more health into the picture and... I think it could be a problem, but just like I said, just looking at the team, my predictions for the season, I think, like I said, I think they might get out to a slow start. I think maybe a couple losses in the first weeks, just while Derek kind of starts to fill out his team. Um, I think I'm going to predict like a three and two record because I feel like at, I feel like the second half of the season is where we're really going to be able to see the Kentucky Kinglers in their full potential. Um, not to mention there's still playoffs after that because everyone is going to is guaranteed a playoff spot no matter what it just depends on what round you start in um, but I personally think I'm thinking like a three and two record like I said I think he gets off to a little bit of a slowish start uh, but is able to turn around in the second half of the season what do you what are you thinking yeah I'm thinking the same thing I feel like it's gonna be a, a rocky season but still I can see a very positive outcome coming out for Derek same here. All right, so moving on to the next team, we have the Detroit Luxuries, whose coach is Gamer Views. Now, this team was actually, so one of the questions I asked during the interview was, which team do you feel like will be misunderestimated, or I guess underestimated rather, um, but turn around and actually surprise people with how well they perform? And a lot of people gave the answer they said the detroit luxuries and it wasn't really because they were looking at the team and they thought oh it's bad it's because they were looking at the team and they have no idea what he's going to be bringing uh people haven't really seen a lot of these mods too much in competitive we briefly talked about it before we started recording luxury i've never really seen luxury competitive alolan nine tails i've never really seen certain mods i've never really seen but at the same time you still look at the team you see quite a bit of power here i mean you have metagross which is an insane mod you have togekiss who was always you know solid and competitive haxorus who is a pseudo legend in our hearts um <laughs> And then Ribombi, we've seen, well, I've, I've, I've at least seen it in VGC here or there. Always kind of used a little bit differently, but just immediately looking at his team, I mean, I can see why people might not, might underestimate him, but it's mostly because I feel like people should honestly be more careful, if anything, when they play the Detroit Luxuries. What do you think? Yeah, like you said, there's nothing really to expect. So, like, I think with going against Max's team, they're going to want to, prepare themselves or to expect the unexpected you know bring out yeah bring out their best weapons uh against his most um i don't, I don't know what the right word to say it is like if they if bring out a mon that they think you know would do all too well against it probably not the greatest yeah. idea bring up bring up their slower mons to start out just to see what he's got going on his mons yeah it's definitely gonna be interesting to see how other teams play against him because exactly like what you just said like our team's gonna come out guns blazing against him and chance you know that they have the right strategy and not you know not knowing what he's gonna bring or our team's gonna you know like you said bring it in take it slow kind of feel it out see what he's bringing and then adjust their game plan from there i personally think he's gonna be the trickiest team to play in my opinion um because of the mystery surrounding his team, I feel like a lot of teams are probably going to be a little hesitant. Uh, either A, people teams are going to be hesitant, or B, they're going to just have faith in the plan that, that they brought and are just going to go with what they got. Um, I, but I think overall, anyone who has to go against this team is probably going to have to uh, kind of 
be ready to adjust i feel like because it's going to be really difficult to understand exactly what he's going to bring on a week-to-week -week basis because you guys got to remember you can also change your mons in between weeks so he could bring alolan nine tails glaring moltres haxorus and metagross one week next week he's got togekiss and ribbon b on the team takes off haxorus and metagross and then he destroys your team because he he knows exactly what he's doing so it'll be i it's gonna be interesting i believe his first matchup is uh the miami dragonites but i think honestly the i feel like for me looking at his team one of his bigger weaknesses is steel and poison am i right in saying that i think yeah um yeah so derek is definitely gonna be an interesting matchup uh against so the kinglers rather are gonna be the, uh, an interesting matchup against the lux rays but just kind of looking at his team i feel like his biggest advantage like we've said is, is the sort of mystery surrounding him uh, it's, it's gonna be a little bit hard here to predict his record. Do you have any idea of what you you would say for his record? I'm gonna say that he's gonna get an easy three to two or four to one. Uh, mm -hmm. His losses or loss um, would probably have happen at the end of the season because people mm -hmm. will be more well prepared to see what they can bring against this team. You know, learning the move set, knowing what yeah. to prepare for. I, if he's losing at all, it's going to be late season. I'm actually going to agree with you on that. I am going to agree with you on that for sure. And that's not a good look for playoffs. If he starts to lose at the end of the season, I'm going to go with a similar sort of idea for one through two. Uh, I totally agree with you on that. Uh, it really depends on if teams can figure him out, can kind of get an idea of what he's starting to bring because then he loses that mystery factor. And now he's really got to, you know, be ready for them coming out guns blazing um that's gonna be bad if he starts to lose towards the end of the season leading into playoffs especially if he doesn't have a buy and he has to play first round it's gonna be really interesting it's gonna be really interesting so definitely keep an eye out on the luxuries as we move through the season to see how they perform and how they they adjust you know how the league adjusts to them and how they adjust to the league uh but moving on to the third team the chicago score bunnies their coach is crow bats and right right off the rip immediately i didn't even have that in the script when we did the announcement video i looked at his team and i immediately knew this is going to be some kind of drizzle team this is going to be some kind of rain meta team mm -hmm. uh looking at his roster he's got seven water types uh what was like i just sent you the rosters right now what was your immediate reaction to seeing this team like i saw the koger and i was just like oh okay i was gonna say something about it then i saw peloper i was like what the heck <laughs> peloper <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see how he's gonna use it first of all i just want to say i love the team name like most people mm. they go with chicago they, they think of bears which is honestly something i do i mean my favorite all my favorite teams except for basketball uh are chicago teams so mm. um i'm a big fan of all of them but score bunnies it's my favorite Gen 8 starter. I love the I love the name for it. So, uh, props to Crobats on the name. I love it. Um, looking at the rest of his team here, Kingdra. I love Kingdra. Uh, I used it in the mm. Shiny Lock and uh, I used it in the Rival Lock. Um, so I've definitely gained more of a love for it recently. Definitely an underrated Gen 2 mon while being kind of you know something that a lot of people love at the same time. So it's like underrated, but it's mm. also not if you if you catch my drift here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Seismitoad is one of my favorite Unova mods. I love seeing that there as one of his many water types. Uh, Kabutops <laughs> is also an interesting choice. I, I've heard some things about it in VGC, but not too much. So that is also a good choice. Um, mm -hmm. As we've discussed before, or at least you've mentioned, Crobats is the only one here who has had tons of experience with VGC since he regularly yeah. does it. Um, so I'm excited to see what we see from Crobats. I definitely think he's going to have a positive record by the end of the season. I'm looking forward to his matches most. Yeah, he he was the other one that was brought up uh, for the question of who, who in the league is m looking most dangerous. He was brought up a lot because a lot of people... The rain meta, especially back in like Gen 4, back when the weather metas were, were flying high, the drizzle meta was up there. I mean, it's always been up there because of how much it does for water types. Uh, that's why he has Ludicolo, that's why he has Pelipper, those two are drizzle mons. Uh, it's interesting you brought up Kabutops because I was actually talking with someone and Kabutops is, in my opinion, a pretty solid leadoff mon. 
Uh, not to mention it also has, you know, a swift swim and weak armor, which can also increase its speed. A lot of things that bring its speed up, meaning it can just be very annoying. I think that's going to be one of his most annoying mods, aside from like Ferrothorn and Gal uh, Galvantula. Um, his team is honestly set up well, I, in my opinion. Uh, I know the concern might be, you know, there's seven water types, but at the same time, Every single water type seems to serve a different purpose. You have a pure water, water dragon, pure water, water ground, water rock, water grass, water flying. So you have things all over that can counter everything that they, anyone tries to throw at them. So like you said, it's gonna be really interesting to watch his matches. For me personally, I wanna see the Detroit Luxuries because I don't know what, what that team's got going on uh, for their strategy. But I, I, I am interested to see the, the uh, Chicago Score Bunnies because he bless you he's <laughs> has the most experience and is amongst the favorites i would say in the league i definitely agree with a positive record though uh i'm leaning towards a, a big one i'm thinking like 4-1 i feel like it might be really difficult for teams to figure him out mm -hmm. um and to actually more so to properly prepare for his team and to be ready for that drizzle meta because i could see him doing like a a thing where he brings like a core three for every match and just switches out one until the end where he has to switch out two and maybe that's when he finally gets a loss is when um he has to switch his team around or something but i could definitely see him bringing like a core three pokemon or something like that yeah yeah for sure so, so keep an eye out for Crobats. uh what was your record prediction for him I uh, agree with your four to one. I feel like he has, he has the strongest chance of having a four to one. I, I know that Max, of course, Game Reviews has has a very strong chance, but I feel like he has more of a chance of Crobats than getting more than one loss. Once again, yeah. because of people being able to, you know, finally figure out his team. Uh, but with Crobats, I feel like pe he's going to figure out other people's teams where he mm. can work around uh, his weaknesses with his water types and uh, come out on yeah. top with that one. I wouldn't even be surprised if he doesn't get a single loss this season. Yeah, I think I think his loss, like I said, will come to him having to substitute out Mons. I feel like maybe that's when another team can take advantage. Um, but I agree. It's it's so far just right out, right away looking at it it's looking pretty positive for for crowbats here so uh, it'll be <laughs> i think i think week one's gonna tell us a lot about these teams but moving on to the miami dragonites their coach is guanaco gaming looking at his team he's got shako who by the way was the first overall drafted pick uh <laughs> shako rayquaza cinderace dragapult weavile scissor swamper toxpex and venus now according to him his draft was kind of derailed right off the rip. Uh, apparently, Derek's first three picks were actually supposed to be Guaneco's first three picks or something along those lines. Uh, so I feel like maybe, maybe he might not understand his team fully at first, but just looking at it, I mean, you think Cinderace, you think Libero, Lib however you pronounce it, that ability that basically gives Cinderace a stab with any move. Um, you have Dragapult, who's very powerful the pseudo legendary from gen 8 uh weavile scissor fast mons you have swamper uh great tank Venusaur tank as well toxapex who's really annoying and competitive i mean and then shaku who's who's beefy and is also just as annoying so just looking at his team i feel like honestly if he's able to to create that team synergy I think he can honestly do some good damage in the league. I think his team's got 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 a good amount of power. What do you what are you thinking about uh, the Miami Dragonites here? Uh, the first thing that stands out to me is the the amount of starters he has because um, you know. So, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think starters are usually like where I, where I think of first for competitively positive because the good thing about VGC is that there's so many unique mods that aren't starters um, yeah. that that are stacked. Of course, um, the one that I see first is uh, Swampert because, you know, it's I love Swampert, but it's always, you know, Sceptile is my favorite Pokemon, so it's my favorite Gen 3 starter. So, you know, the fact that Swampert gets to be more competitively positive has always made me a little angry. Um, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I'm angry that Gwinako has Swampert because, you know, that is a very good choice, uh, especially mm -hmm. since, you know, what his plan for, what, for the team uh, was stolen by our friend Derek, so... Um, having something like Swampert is really good on the team. Uh, Rayquaza, 
I remember when I first got into Pokemon, the first thing I heard Rayquaza is the strongest Pokemon to exist. I don't know if that still holds true or if it ever hold, held true, but uh, Rayquaza <laughs> is a great legendary choice for him. Uh, mm -hmm. Toxapex, back in the day when Gen 7 first came out, Toxapex was one of my favorite Pokemon. I have no idea why I loved it so much, but I, I, did, I just love it. So I'm excited to see him use that. Uh, Weavile is also underrated Gen 4 Mon. Um, mm. Cinderace is my favorite Gen 8 starter once again. Uh, Shuckle, the fact that that was the very first Pokemon drafted in the entire league is amusing, <laughs> and I'm excited to see how it is, because that's another thing people uh, have said that Shuckle is a very strong Pokemon, uh, unexpectedly, yeah. so. Uh, Dragapult as well, Scizor, love Scizor. I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. Uh, Venusaur is also my favorite Kanto starter, so. I'm looking forward to seeing how Guanaco uh, goes out with this team. Yeah, I'm interested, like I said, I'm interested to see how he's able to pull the team together. Uh, like we mentioned with his draft being derailed, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can create some team synergy to create uh, a better a game plan with this team. He's had some time to prepare since the draft, so I'm sure he'll have it figured out by week one. I feel like maybe he's going to struggle a bit kind of like Derek, uh but more so just trying to figure out a plan with his team more so when he gets into the battles uh week one he has the detroit luxuries right off the bat so it might be difficult for him to create a plan when he doesn't really have too clear of an idea what his opponent's going to be bringing so it'll be interesting to see because i mean he yeah he's just got power he really has power on his team um not to mention some bulky mons as well i could see him having oh man i could see him having a good record but i feel like kind of like Derek, he might struggle at first uh as he figures out his team but i don't think he'll struggle that much i feel like he'll have an understanding of his team a little bit quicker i feel like maybe it'll come down to tight matchups that he has against other teams um Ah, this is tough. I, I'm thinking. I'm. I'm kind of leaning towards three and two. I'm kind of leaning, leaning towards a three and two record. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think three and two is very solid. I don't. I, I feel guilty giving anybody more losses Losing than wins. So <laughs> yeah. I, I think three and two is the lowest I'll go. To but to be honest, um, if anybody goes two to three, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But I'm not going to say specifically who that be because they'd be like, bro, why me? <laughs> <laughs> uh well that creates an underdog storyline and that's good for the league uh, <laughs> yeah i i think i'm gonna go with the three and two i feel like those two losses will be at the beginning um maybe within the first three games uh and then he starts to kind of get on a roll heading into playoffs um and yeah so that's that is the those miami dragonites so moving on to the everglade entes whose coach is mr fusro dab uh, his team's looking like Rotom Wash, Rillaboom, Blissey, Glaren Slowking, Bisharp, Palkia, Nidoking, Tyranitar, and Clefable. A pretty bulky team. I mean, that is a bulky team. Uh, I mean, just immediately Thick. Blissey, Rotom Wash. I mean, yeah, you look at this team, I mean, you just see a lot of bulk. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying it's dummy thick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got... He's got He's got Rotom W. I think that already says how his season's going to go. W. Yeah, sure. All around. <laughs> Big W. Rotom. Yeah, I, I personally for me, Rotom Wash is the one I've seen the most out of all the Rotom mm -hmm. forms, uh, at least in competitive. Next up would probably be Rotom Heat, but yeah, Rotom yeah, Wash sure. is the one. Yeah, Rotom Wash is always the one that I, I normally see. But I mean, it's going to be a slugfest with his team going against his team. My biggest worry is some offensive power. I feel like, I mean, Rotom Wash can hit decently well. Palkia, obviously, Nido King, Tyranitar. I feel like it's gonna be interesting to see how he's able to flip it from defense to offense. I feel like that's where his biggest struggle is going to be for me. Just immediately looking at his team, I don't have an incredible understanding of competitive, so, you know, I could be completely wrong. I, Blissey could be the most offensive mod on his team and I wouldn't know, mm -hmm. uh, but, <laughs> Just immediately looking at his team, I feel like flipping the flipping the switch and going offensive is where his biggest struggle might be. What are you thinking? Yeah, like I, I wasn't really thinking of this when you uh, initially gave me the teams, but he, while while his team is very bulky, um, there's only a couple there that are also good offensively, like known to be yeah. offensively uh, 
powered uh blissey i i like the joke you made there by saying you know who knows maybe blissey's the best offensive member on his team uh blissey is known literally just being there to be a big pile of hp so um yeah. <laughs> I, i'm sure he's got set up you know getting getting shields and stuff set up and stuff like that um yeah. i think the most power we're gonna see out of his team uh, most people would go with with the legendary but i've been trying to think outside the box and i think the the most power we're going to see from the team is either ty Ramitar or Nido king i agree i definitely agree um my thing is is tight matchups against his team i feel like kind of go against him a bit um just uh it's interesting because just looking at it looking at the other teams i think he's kind of evenly matched with everyone um just immediately i would have to do a little bit more looking but immediately it looks like he's pretty evenly matched with everyone i don't know i have to give some we have to give like one or two people losing records um <laughs> so i i don't think it'll be bad for him though i don't think it'll be i think every match for foos is going to be close i really do uh, I'm for the sake of, of some drama. Uh, I'm gonna give him a two and three record um, But I don't think any of his matches are gonna be blowouts. I really don't I think all of his losses are gonna be so close. I think every match of his is gonna be so close I I can't I can't see him getting blown out with the team. He has um, If anyone else is gonna have a losing record, it's also Derek. I should, probably should have said that but <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Sorry Derek, um, but I don't, I genuinely don't think, even if he does have that many losses, even if he goes 0-5, which I don't think will happen, I don't think any of those losses would be like huge sweeps or anything. Um, I know you said you weren't going to give anyone losing records, so what do you, what are you going to, what are you going to give the Everglade Entes? Um, 0-5 because he lost uh, in the shiny race, no I'm just kidding. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of surprised he didn't just go with Salamence just, just to be like, hey, hey look at me Landon. Um, but you know, <laughs> you know, looking at his team, I I, I haven't really thought of because you know most people when they think losses, they think oh this guy just got destroyed. But um, you know, after what you said, where like even if he loses, his team is good enough where it's going to be close enough that people are going to think that he will win. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go back to what I said about Guanaco and Fus, and I'm gonna make them the two that I have two and three. Um, but okay. don't take that as offense, guys. I, you, you know that you guys are my friends and I wouldn't mean anything <laughs> otherwise, but um, all you have to do then is just surprise me. Surprise me. Do your That's best. It. Do, be do better it. than I expect. So that goes to all of you. Do better than what, what we're expecting. And blow us all away. Do worse than we expect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you You're the favorite. Worse. All the pressure's on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So with the Everglades out of the way, we have the final team, uh, the Atlanta Braviary with the commissioner of the league, uh, Stone Family 64, as their coach. Looking at his team, he has Reyna Clis, Diago, Kinkelder, Volcarona, Aegislash, Lapras, Mamoswine, Glare and Rapidash, and vile plume uh immediately he he's letting the whole league know that he is doing trick room he's doing a trick room team and you can kind of probably guess that looking at his team he has quite a few slower mons rain eclipse the Olga, and kelder i mean lapras is fairly slow mama swine i mean these mons like a couple of them like glare and rapidash aren't super slow but slow enough to where trick room could benefit them um and looking at a lot of other teams you don't i think maybe only the everglade entes would also benefit from a trick room just not as much i feel like as stone's team as the atlanta braviary um i i'm interested to see if he's able to master the trick room early on because if other teams are able to eliminate that out of the picture then i don't exactly know what the plan b is going to be for his team for stone's team because let's say right off the rip, uh, let's say he only brings Rayun and Clis for Trick Room, and right off the rip it dies before he can even get off a of Trick Room. What's the plan B? You know, what is the plan B that he's gonna bring? I personally, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, just looking at his team, can you can you get like an idea? I am not sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm honestly I can't really think of of a, a secondary strategy for his team but i will say he has very good type distribution i mean psychic uh steel dragon fighting fire bug i mean he has 
a lot of type distribution, only a couple repeated typings. So I think there is definitely potential outside of the trick room. Um, I My biggest thing is I hope he doesn't over rely on trick room. Like I said, because if it gets shut down, then uh, then what's his plan B exactly? What, what are you thinking with the Atlanta Braviary? Um, plan B, um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> If, if you guys aren't familiar, you probably haven't been able to tell this whole video because I've been talking a lot about it, but I'm I'm not competitively trained. I'm probably just as good as Derek is. So like <laughs> strategy is not my thing, but um, just looking at this team alone, I think the best thing he could go with is, uh, you know, anything that he has on his vile plume, possibly that's his setup mon, uh, Rhea Nicholas as well. Um, I'm not saying necessarily Aegis Slash, I just wanted to mention that I love seeing it on this team. Um, <laughs> but his his team doesn't exactly scream setup other other than the fact that he said that he's using Trick Room. Yeah. The only things I can see are maybe I think Aegis Slash, I'm pretty sure gets Swords Dance. Uh but Volcarona with Quiver Dance could also be a big problem. I, but I feel like we could see a lot of rock type moves. Um from the other teams and that's an easy oko on on volcarona that's an easy one hit uh because it is obviously quad weak you land a stone edge it's over for it um so i my reasoning for for giving the atlanta bravery are losing records because i'm not sure what the backup plan is going to be if trick room fails if that's a big if trick room fails um fails to really help his team out um or like i said if the trick room on dies right away uh it's gonna be interesting to see kind of what the plan b is i think that's my problem here and that's why i'm gonna give him the two and three record is because i'm not sure what the plan b is if trick room goes out the window and i don't know if he'll be able to adjust i don't know if he has a plan b ready uh so that's where my 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 thing is what are you thinking with his record i'm gonna say undecided <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at that because I feel like if I, if I say something wrong, uh, uh, I'm gonna regret it later, and people are gonna go ham on me for it. So, uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave uh, I'm gonna leave Matt's team as the uh, let's see let's see what we see let's see what we see. Okay. So with all those teams out of the way, uh, week one is going to be approaching next week. The first games will be next week, July, uh, July. Yeah, yeah, July, July 10th. Um, so the first matchup, uh, maybe not scheduled first matchup, but at least the first one I know is the Kentucky Kinglers versus the Atlanta Braviary. Now, as I mentioned with Derek, um, I think he's going to get off to a slow start. I feel like Matt's going to be able to get his trick room off and he's going to be able to do well against Derek. We could see Ray Nucleus, Volcarona. I mean, a variety of different mons. Derek, I don't know if he's going to run with pure power just right off the bat. Just bring a lot of powerful mons. Um, he could easily do that, uh, but it's going to be an interesting matchup. I think I do think I'm going to hand it to Matt for that match uh purely because i think it's going to take a second like i mentioned when we were talking about the kentucky kinglers i think it's going to take a second for derek to to catch up uh on everything competitive and figure out exactly what he's going to need to do with his team so i feel like matt's going to be able to take advantage of that stone family 64 he's gonna be able to take advantage of that and the atlanta bravery are going to walk with the win there i think it's gonna be uh uh six three 6-3, I think is going to be the score there. What do you think for that matchup? I'm, I'm still here. I'm, I'm just trying to think. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think 6-3 is, is solid. Yeah. Well, Derek, you better come out swinging because <laughs> I know Matt is. <laughs> um, <laughs> so next matchup is going to be the Detroit Luxrays versus the Miami Dragonites. Uh, like we talked about, the biggest advantage the Luxrays have going into week one is just the mystery surrounding their team. And I feel like maybe Guaneco is going to take a second to figure out exactly what he wants to do with his new, well, not necessarily new, because he's had, like I said, he's had some time to figure it out. Um, but he might take a second, but I feel like he'll still put up a very good fight. It's not like he doesn't have any power on his team. Uh, we could easily sh see Shuckle first first week. Uh, so I'm thinking, I'm leaning a little towards a 6-4, but in the favor of the Luxures. I feel like the Luxures will be able to walk away with a week one win. I'm leaning towards 6-4. What are you thinking? 
Yeah, I think that one's going to be pretty close too. I'd say 6 4 as well. Okay. Uh, and the final matchup, the favorite, we're putting that pressure on him. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> Chicago Score Bunnies coach Crobats versus the Everglade Entes coach Foose Road Dab. Oh man, this is a. Uh... This is an interesting one because I I don't know if if Crobat's going to come out swinging. I don't know if he's going to make some subs early on. I don't I think we're going to see the drizzle right away. I think it's going to be painfully obvious. So this game ultimately I feel like it's going to come down to how Fusro Dad prepares for the for the drizzle team and the problem is is one of his mon mons a couple of his mons benefit in palkia and rotom wash however everyone else kind of struggles to deal with it uh rillaboom can deal with a couple of crobats his mons but there's also the pelipper and the ludicolo he's got to think about so i'm gonna hand this one to crobats i think crobats takes this one uh i think it's gonna be incredibly close i'm gonna say like the closest match of the week six five um i feel like it's gonna be incredibly close between these two um, but ultimately, the, the Drizzle Metal will reign supreme. We'll be back in Gen 4 for a week. <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to say I'm gonna say 6-4, but a, okay. a possibility is 6-5. Like, it's definitely going to be more than half of, of uh, Crobat's team that um, Foos is going to be taking here. But um, I, I definitely think that the match will be in Crobat's favor. Yeah. And there it is. That is our final prediction for week one of the Elite Battle League. That is our preseason roundup uh, for the Elite Battle League. Now, take these predictions with a pinch of salt because we have no idea what these teams are actually bringing. And after week one, we'll have a more solid idea and we can maybe go over some predictions again, um, kind of revise our predictions from there. Uh, but that is going to be it for this weekly roundup. Tune in next week when we go over the week one matchups. I'm very excited to see them. And like I said, the league kicks off on July 10th, Saturday, July 10th. So be sure to keep an eye out for the matches. Of course, check out always more videos, game reviews, Crobats, Gwaneko Gaming, Food Store Dab, and Stone Family 64, whose links will be in the description alongside mine. I am Lonely Hermit. That is Inferno Man, and we will catch you guys next week with the next weekly roundup. Hope you all have a great day, and July 10th. July 10th. Bye. Bye.